Hello, and welcome to Ask the Expert. I'm Joe Vaughman, president of the Birmingham Bluefield Chamber. And today I am joined by Alex Lannon, a realtor with Dobe Real Estate in Birmingham, and Gita Kovalova, a mortgage resource professional with Mortgage Resource Consultants in Southfield. Welcome both. Um, today we're gonna to talk about the real estate market and tips for both buyers and sellers. It seems like the real estate industry was one of the few that was not crippled too bad by uh, the pandemic. So why don't you tell us now that we're coming out of the pandemic, each of you, uh, where does the real estate market stand today in terms of housing availability and other issues? Alex, sure. why don't you start us off? Okay, uh, good morning. Um, it is a very fast paced market. Um, as we've been seeing throughout the pandemic and since things have opened up a bit, the supply of homes on the market uh, is not nearly enough to meet the buyer demand. So this means that homes are selling very quickly still and that buyers are competing for homes, which is really driving up the sales prices. And just to give you some numbers, um, as of June in Oakland County, the inventory of single family homes on the market was just 40% of what it was in June, 2021. And the median sale price was up by um, almost 24% to June, 2021. Wow. And uh, Guido? So um, on top of having low inventory, we're also in a very um, favorable um, situation in terms of rates and low mortgage rates encourage home buying. The rates have been below 4% now for over two years and reaching all time lows at the start of 2021. And the, they continue to remain uh, within historically low levels with 30 year mortgage lingering still just around 3%. Low rates allow buyers to qualify for higher home prices. And that is why demand has been growing, even as the prices of houses are going up. The big question, of course, is how long those good rates are going to continue. I mean, we've been enjoying them for two years now. Um, and that, of course, is open for discussion. However, in its last statement, Fed did announce that they anticipate raising rates sooner than previously expected uh, in 2023 versus 2024. And after announcement itself, the rates jumped by a quarter of a percent just in two days. Thankfully, it did come down back to three, um, so we're good. But uh, in general, we expect that economic growth and inflation will gradually drive the interest rates higher, which of course will affect the affordability of the houses. So that's where we are with uh, financing and the mortgage rates. So I know even pre-pandemic, I mean, the mortgage rates have been low for a number of years. And I know that um, the sweet spot seemed to have been that $250,000 to $500,000 price range in terms of um, desirability in, in the markets. With the pandemic, though, um, is one of the reasons why we're having such a, a shortage of housing is people just kind of hunkered down and for whatever reason they were, af they were afraid or reluctant to, to move during the pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. That was part of it, especially initially. And then I think what's happening now is um, there are a lot of homeowners who would like to sell and unlock all of this equity they have in their home. Um, and also maybe their needs have changed with all of the social change we've seen um, since the pandemic hit, you know, with employers, some employers saying, well, we're never bringing our workforce back to the office or, or arranging this sort of hybrid uh, home, work from home slash office schedule. Um, so homeowners are wanting to move, but they're afraid that they're not going to be able to find that next home in time um, with the inventory challenges we have. So, um, and then Gita, I know that with the, it's almost like hyperinflation with the cost of houses that I've heard some friends of mine who have been in the market that they're concerned about um, the appraisal value and, and whether, you know, the impact that's having, particularly at closing, where buyers are, are, you know, having to bring a wheelbarrow full of cash to cover the appraisal shortage. Do you see that um, something that's easing now, or is that going to be uh, how it is for the foreseeable future? Uh, so the, it was a huge challenge uh, the first part of the year. Um, it's still, um, it's still a challenge. And 
we're going to cover uh, some tips for buyers um, in, a little further in the interview on how to deal with it. But uh, we are seeing that the appraisals are somewhat catching up to the uh, growing prices of the house because in the beginning of the year when um, so the, the appraisal is based on the comparable sales for the last 12 months. So the prices were going up, let's say for a year or maybe you know 10 months where we really have seen a huge growth in uh, prices. So the appraised values were lagging behind the new sales prices. And that's where we were seeing a huge challenge with the appraisal gap. It's still in existence, but it, I'm seeing it less and less um, because again, we now have better sales data with the higher prices in the last few months. Okay, and like you said, we'll dig into that in just a couple of minutes, but I do wanna focus on um, the seller. So Alex, a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, my family situation is probably not uncommon to a lot of people in, in my generation, my age group. So we are empty nesters. We still are residing in what I would call our family home, which now is too large for two people to need or manage. Um, and so we've had that discussion about, boy, should we cash in and, and, and take you know, all the equity from our house? But what's stopping us, which probably is stopping a lot of people, is it's a double-edged sword, right? So we can sell our house for a lot of money, but are we going to then end up paying even more for less of a house as we downsize because of the asking prices and the fact that they're selling, many houses are selling so far over the asking price. So if, if, you, if I was working with you as a realtor, what, what would you tell me as a potential seller to ease my, uh, my, uh, my anxiety about uh, paying too much for the next house and, and canceling out the benefit of selling the current house? Right. Yeah, that's it's a very, very common concern. Um, and I would say, you know, we I know Gita does this as well. I always sit down with my clients and talk about short and long term goals. And I'm very honest about the fact that buying in this market does not make sense for everybody. If you're buying a house just for the five year plan, it might not make sense to pay these high, high prices. If you're, if you're in it for the longer haul where, you know, you're going to see that longer term appreciation, then it's probably just fine. Um, so I like to go through all of that and also be communicating with the lender if, if they're, if the client's financing about financially what makes sense for the client. Um, and we are still finding good opportunities for buyers, not especially as Gita just mentioned, it seems like we're maybe seeing early signs of, of a balancing, uh, a better balancing between buyers and sellers, which is encouraging. Um, so not every situation is, you know, you're paying 100K over the list price for a home. So it's just waiting for that right opportunity, one that makes sense for you. It's setting those goals. I can only go up to X. And beyond that, it makes no sense for me financially. And so just sticking to that as you go through the process and make offers on homes. And, and, and timing wise, <clears throat> in terms of, you know, timing a sale and a purchase, um, with the concerns there, you know, will I find that next home in time to sell my current home? We also sit down and look at all of that too. Can you afford to, to buy before you sell so you can stay in your current home um, and look for that right opportunity and don't feel time pressured? Um, the other things we're doing is um, asking for more time before closing. So typically a buyer is going to offer 30 to 45 days um, before the closing date. Uh, maybe we push that out to 60. Um, and, and another common thing that buyers are offering right now to be competitive is um, a period of post-closing occupancy where they let the seller stay in the home after closing. And right now we're seeing, it, it's very common to see even up to 60 days in the home after closing for free. So, really? <laughs> so those are some of the things we can do to bridge that time gap. And then Gita, from the financing side, again, what would you tell me in terms of trying to ease my concerns about um, either paying too much for the house or um, not having enough cash to, to, um, to, to complete the transaction? Right, so it's always, it's 
so it's not just about selling a house, right? It's achieving your goals. So whether it's moving up or for you, maybe downsizing, right? Because you're an um, empty nester. For some people, maybe it's changing the school district. So selling a home usually comes into a picture where there's a change in life situation. So it's uh, the best thing the seller can do is to understand the options available and create a plan of action that includes both selling the home and buying a home. So it's not just selling, right? It's also buying. Most sellers become buyers. Um, and there's strategies that we use on the financial side to help, um, you know, ease the anxieties or just to make it happen even. One of them is checking on the possibility of qualifying with both houses, even if it's for a short period of time where you carry maybe two mortgages, because contingent offers are not great contestants in this market, as Alex would attest. And, you know, again, to provide support, figuring out, what, okay, what will make you a strong buyer so you can buy a house soon after you sell yours or buy one before you sell yours. Establishing sources of down payment for the new house prior to the sales proceeds becoming available. Some people don't realize there are, um, you may access your 401k funds and borrow against them to be able to buy a house before selling a new one. Another strategy is putting the lowest down payment possible at the time of the purchase and then paying down the balance on the loan. And you can even recast it. You don't even have to refinance. You can recast it, your balance and lower the payments. So there's a lot of different strategies that we've been employing to help sellers become competitive buyers and find a house in time. Excellent. So shifting then now to the buyer's side, um, Alex, aside from the low inventory, um, what other challenges are you facing as you're trying to put your clients into a new house? Um, I think what I try to do and my challenge with each new um, offer situation is, is getting in touch with the, li the listing agent to find out as much as I can about what the sellers are looking for. Yes, of course, sellers want a nice price, but sometimes there are other things, other terms that they're looking for. Sometimes they're very emotionally attached to their homes and they wanna see it go to that next buyer who's gonna care for it as they have. So really trying to figure out what is going to appeal to the sellers and making and putting together an offer that really stands out. Um, and then of course, you know, low inventory being a challenge. Um, it's, it's really just um, setting expectations with buyers, um, helping them understand what the process will look like. Um, we are finding great homes, as I said before, but it, it takes some planning. It takes more communication and teamwork with the lender and the realtor and the buyer and, and some more patience, frankly, um, but, but we do get there. And then Gita, it sounds like once you've found that house, you're the home of your dreams, because of the competitiveness of multiple offers and so forth, it, it sounds like as a buyer, you have to have all of your financial resources, not only identified, but actually gathered before you even make that offer. Is that, is that a fair statement? Oh, absolutely. Um, the buyer, not only does buyer needs to be pre-approved, um, all my buyers know their options. So when they go to look for houses, they're prepared. They know what their strategies are. If I have to offer over asking price, what is my limit financially? If I have to offer appraisal gap coverage, what are my options on financing or coming up, uh, financing that appraisal gap or coming up with extra cash? So the toughest market, of course, is for buyers that only plan on putting three or 5% down. Uh, it's true, they will need to come up with the additional cash out of pocket if there is appraisal gap that they need to cover. However, the buyers that uh, have ability to put 10 or 20% down have options. And some of the options include, um, a lot of people don't even know that, but there are um, strategies that will allow to finance an appraisal gap without raising the loan amount or payment. 
So instead of bringing, let's say, extra $25,000, we can structure it in such a way where the payment stays the same, the loan amount stays the same, and the buyer only brings about extra $2,000 to closings. If the buyer is happy to increase their payment, I don't know, by $30, $50 a month, they don't have to even bring the extra $2,000 to closing. Again, applies only to buyers that have ability to put 20 or 10% down, but those strategies, strategies are available. And if the buyer knows those prior to even writing an offer, they can write confident offers. They can offer appraisal gap coverage or guarantee or you know, pay a little extra over asking price. So the, the key always is preparation and knowing your options way ahead of um, writing an offer. It doesn't seem like this, uh, this tight market is gonna ease anytime soon. So I'm guessing that both of you are gonna continue to be very busy in your respective roles. I wanna thank uh, Alex, Alex Lannon from Dobie Real Estate in Birmingham. And I wanna thank Gita Kovalova from Mortgage Resource Plus in Southfield for this great information. Thank you both so much for taking some time with us. Uh, for those of you who are watching this and you think colleagues or friends might benefit from this information, uh, we will have it up on our Chamber website and it will also be on our YouTube page. So again, thank you both very much and uh, I wish you a great rest of summer. Thank you. Same.